What's up you guys, it's Steve here and I've got a lot of stimulus check updates for you in today's video and this is your stimulus check update. Now, right now, we're waiting to see if Congress is gonna be able to come to some sort of agreement on a federal level stimulus package, Build Back Better. We're still waiting to hear on that. And it seems like things have fallen apart with that. However, we're hearing that they're actually having bipartisan agreement on tons of legislation, just not on the stimulus package. Now, let me know your thoughts on this. Is this a good sign that they're starting to work together on things or is it not a good sign because they're working together on things, but they're not working together on stimulus. Now, right now, we're waiting to see what's going to be unfolding. We're hearing talks are taking place between the White House, Congress, Joe Manchin to try to come to some sort of agreement. We're hearing that they're likely going to have something assembled here. And the goal, the deadline that we heard, the arrival time is supposed to be around March 1st. But we heard from Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, that's a soft deadline. Now, while we're waiting to see what's going on with that, we are seeing tons of Stimulus checks coming out on different levels for states, counties, and cities. And take a look, you guys. Here are some of the ones we're going to be covering today. Waltz proposes $350 rebate checks, a budget surplus. So there's another one for $350. Here's one I mentioned yesterday. Mills proposes $500 checks for Maine taxpayers. Going to get into all the details for you guys in this video. Another one, Vermont child tax credit. How $1,200 payments compare to the federal level child tax credit. And we're waiting to see if that's going to be extended in the Build Back Better bill. I'll keep you up to date. And lastly, Hotchill, New York, is going to be offering up to $3,000 in direct payments. So, got a lot of stimulus check updates for you. I'm going to keep you up to date on everything. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's start off, though, by smashing the like button if you appreciate the updates, keeping you up to speed on everything going on. Really helps out my channel a ton. Just takes a second. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments, share this out if you think it's going to help out other people. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date, totally free to do so. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. You can come join the Ram Fam. And if you got any specific questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of directly. All you got to do is hop onto Instagram, shoot me a DM at SteveRam3, and consider joining the second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's start off with the video footage of bipartisan agreements happening on legislation in Congress right now, yet we don't have an agreement on stimulus. Take a look. Sahil, you've got some good reporting on another topic here. While nobody was looking, there's been an outbreak of bipartisanship on Capitol Hill after BBB, after uh, voting rights had failed. We've started to see this pickup in things moving in a bipartisan way. And after you reported it, you got the nicest Twitter mention I've seen from a politician in a long time. Mine are never this nice. The president of the United States retweeting you saying, I ran for president because I believe government can still deliver for the people. There's so much more to do, but Democrats Democrats and Republicans are proving we can still come together to deliver important progress for the American people. Uh, what's going on here? Is the Senate in particular going to start cranking out bipartisan legislation in the, in the first uh, quarter of this year? It's been an unexpected and quite sudden outbreak of bipartisanship that has swept through Capitol Hill just in the last few days. The list of, of uh, issues is quite remarkable here. It starts with a, a, a recent agreement made on the Violence Against Women Act, a 1994 law that was initially authored by uh, a, a senator named Joe Biden himself. Let's put this up on the screen. There's a U.S.-China competition bill as well that the House has passed, that the Senate has passed, uh, that is headed to a conference committee postal service reform to you know, improve the finances of the post office and improve mail delivery. No arbitration, no forced arbitration for assault victims. It passed both the House and the Senate. It's headed to President Biden's desk for a signature. This is a major change in employment law that applies to those alleging sexual misconduct. There's an appropriations deal uh, for a full year government funding bill that had languished for months and months. And then there are two other issues um, that are a buzz on Capitol Hill, uh, an attempted ban on lawmakers trading stocks and bipartisan activity in the Senate when it comes to uh, changing election laws to prevent future candidates from executing a coup, as was arguably attempted in 2020. Now, what's behind this? Republicans say the fact that Democrats have given up on their dreams of nuking the filibuster and passing a, a lot of progressive legislation that has made senators like Mitt Romney and Susan Collins uh, believe that this is possible. And uh, Democrats we talked to say, look, they came here to govern. They believe in governing. They believe in compromise. Yes, they have bigger ambitions. 
they believe voters don't care if uh, achievements are partisan or bipartisan, but they will take victories where they can. And looking ahead to the midterms, they're going to need everyone they can get, Garrett. So there you have it, you guys. Sounds like they're getting some legislation done, but we will see if they're able to do it for more stimulus. Now, in the meantime, as I mentioned, I've got several stimulus checks to get you caught up on. And let's dive into the first one. A link in the description below. Waltz proposes $350 rebate checks from budget surplus. Republicans call it election year gimmick, though. Now, the article says that Minnesota households could be eligible for up to $350 direct payments, and frontline workers that stayed on the job during the pandemic could receive an extra $1,500 this year under a plan that the governor, Tim Waltz, proposed on Thursday. Now, the Democratic farmer labor governor said Minnesota should benefit from the state's $7.75 billion budget surplus. And as a part of his plan for the funds, more than $4 billion would go toward direct payments, worker recruitment and retention programs, grants for farmers, and broadband expansion. Now, he had this to say, this is about expanding an already vibrant economy. It's about making sure that we're lifting up those that were hit the hardest during the pandemic, and it's making sure that there's a long-range vision about where Minnesota's going and we will well be positioned to do just that. Now, lawmakers in the divided capital have split over the best ways to spend the projected budget surplus and will likely spend months, unfortunately, debating how the state ought to use it. Now, Waltz, he said that he would propose three uses for the funds, and here they are for Minnesota. Economic opportunities, helping kids and families, and advancing health and safety. Now, we will see I'll keep you up to date here on the channel, but it looks like in Minnesota, there's going to be a lot of direct payments going out in different forms, and I'll let you know as soon as we hear. Now, link in the description below to this next one that I actually mentioned to you in yesterday's videos, and that is that Governor Mills is proposing using half of the state's surplus to give $500 checks to Maine taxpayers. So another state stimulus check due to surplus funds. And this one says, Governor Janet Mills is proposing to return to Maine taxpayers half of the anticipated $822 million surplus to the people. Now, the announcement during her State of the State address comes at a time of worries about the inflation that's driving up the costs of food and gas. And she said that the givebacks amount to about $500 per person and will be distributed out to 800,000 taxpayers. Now, the governor also vowed to change her approach to keeping people safe as the science evolves during the pandemic. And that was welcomed news to critics of the emergency orders that she has issued. So you guys, another one in Maine. And as more details come out on this proposal, I'll be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel. Now, next up, we have Vermont. And I mentioned this one also briefly in another video about child tax credits, as they're going to be offering their own state child tax credit currently proposed. Take a look, you guys. What is the Vermont child tax credit and how is $1,200 payments compared to the federal benefit? And as you know, we're going to be seeing if they extend out the child tax credit on a federal level in the Build Back Better bill. Now, the expanded child tax credit expired at the end of 2021, but Vermont is planning to issue its own credit to families with young children. According to VT Digger, the Vermont House of Representatives recently approved a $50 million tax cut package that would send $1,200 per child to most families with children who are ages six and under. Vermont's child tax credit is modeled after the federal child tax credit that would help out about 50 thousand children. Now, under the American Rescue Plan back in 2021, advance payments of up to half of the 2021 child tax credit were sent to eligible taxpayers. Most eligible families receive monthly payments of 250 or 300 per child from July till December. Families can still claim the payments or the remaining half of the child tax credit when filing 2021 taxes. And I mentioned that to you here on the channel. You got half of it in those monthly payments. Now, when you file your taxes, you're going to get the rest of that federal child tax credit. But as of 2022, you are currently not receiving any more monthly payments. And we'll see if that changes when they pass uh, legislation. Now, lawmakers say that they are aiming to bring more people into the state and reverse demographic trends. VT Digger reported Representative Scott Beck said that the main reason that he's supporting this bill was that it addresses the bigger problem facing the state. So in Vermont, they're trying to pass an additional $1,200 
for parents with children ages six and under. Now, next up and lastly, and the biggest one we've got for New York. Take a look at this. Governor Hutchell to offer up to $3,000 in direct payments to healthcare workers as a part of a $10 billion plan. And the article says, New York Governor Kathy Hutchell says that she is offering up to $3,000 each in direct payments to full-time healthcare workers who remained in their position for one year as a part of the $10 billion plan. Now, the plan includes the following. $2 billion to support healthcare wages, $2 billion to support healthcare and mental hygiene worker retention bonuses, with up to $3,000 bonuses going to full-time workers who remain in their positions for one year, and prorated bonuses for those working fewer hours as well. $500 million for cost of living adjustment or COLA to help raise wages for human service workers, $2 billion for healthcare capital infrastructure and improved lab capacity, and also other investments in workforce and healthcare access and delivery. And they had this to say, from the very beginning of the pandemic, New York healthcare workers have been on the front lines, the governor said. We must stop the current hemorrhaging of healthcare workers, and we need to not just say that we owe them a debt of gratitude, but actually pay them the debt that we owe them. The health of every New Yorker depends on strong, stable, and equitable healthcare systems and healthcare workers are its very foundation. With the largest ever investment in healthcare, we will retain, rebuild, and grow our healthcare workforce and ensure that we deliver the highest quality healthcare for New Yorkers. So there you have it, you guys. That is the latest proposed stimulus checks in New York, Maine, Minnesota, and Vermont. And I'll keep you up to date on those. And as more roll out, I'll be sure to keep you up to date as well. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget, take a quick second, smash that like button. Helps out the channel a ton. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Leave your comments, share this out if you think it's gonna help out other people. If this is your first time here and you wanna stay up to date on everything going on, all you gotta do is hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, you can come join the Ram fam. If you got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3 and consider joining my second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. But with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, God bless, this is Steve.